Vi is a very aggressive deck that likes to go wide with attack action cards. Cards like Double Strike, Flame Call Awakening, Mask of the Pouncing Lynx, and Fi's Hero Power ensure this to be possible. All while paying off his go-wide strategy with cards like Spreading Flames, Art of War, and Salt the Wound. Several small attacks into the unknown variable at the end of the combat chain make Fi a very difficult to read hero, therefore difficult to block out. You are consistently putting your opponent in a situation where they need to guess what you have. If they wait to block in an effort to get full value out of their cards on a potential lava burst, then they could lose out on a ton of value if you don't have a finisher and just arsenal your last card. As a general rule of thumb, if your hand doesn't have insane combo potential, you want to be setting up a 5 card hand. Knowing when to spot these opportunities and set up is one of the main focal points of 5's skill expression. If you are fortunate enough to win the dice roll, you always want to go second. No matter what your heart is telling you, going first is always a trap, even against Icelander. Generally speaking, a 5 card hand is significantly more damage than a 4 card hand. So with this in mind, on any given turn, you want to end with an arsenal, even if it's just an extra Phoenix Flame. You must also learn to play flexible enough to pivot between the two different play styles that Mask of Momentum and Mask of the Pouncing Links command you do. Let's go over Mask of Momentum first. Sequencing and breakpoints are everything. Every turn is a mental battle with your opponent to trick them into either A, getting a particularly inefficient block out of them, or B, getting a mass trigger. Your turns and playstyle need to completely revolve around Mask of Momentum triggers. Only play Mask of Momentum against decks that are uncomfortable blocking. Against a deck like Usury, Bravo, Dory, they're already blocking all of your cards anyway, so forcing them to block a mask trigger will just be giving them what they want, kind of playing into their strategy and giving you no additional benefit out of your Mask of Momentum. Mask of Momentum also rewards the five card setup hand strategy a bit more in that you can often threaten a Mask of Momentum trigger two times with a five card hand. This gives you some much needed freedom to block in aggro mirrors. Take a turn to block a bit and set up, then threaten two Mask of Momentum triggers on the following turn to get your opponent on the back foot and get the tempo back in your favor. The tempo being in your favor is huge, particularly with the Mask of Momentum game plan, as you'll have more room to present cleaner or multiple Mask of Momentum triggers. I recommend playing this into all aggressive strategies, Fi, Katsu, Dash.io, just to name a few. I also recommend playing this into Dromai, but for a bit of a different reason, as it counts Dragon Hits as a hit and makes your Mask of Momentum triggers much more consistent. Next, let's talk about Mask of the Pouncing Links. Links effectively makes your opponent start the game with 6 to 8 less life and is the preferred mask when we know our opponent is not going to let us play the game in the way we want to which is setting up those five card hands, threatening two mask and momentum triggers a turn, things like this. Decks like Bravo, Azalea, Icelander are all looking to stop us via Channel Lake Frigid, Red in the Ledger, Spinal Crush, Crippling Crush, Blizzard, Remorseless, etc. With these in mind, we need to be parking great cards in the arsenal, blocking and playing one to two card hands until they stumble. Once they finally give us a turn, then we'll pull the trigger, cash in our arsenal, throw everything we have at them, hopefully putting us back in the driver's seat or winning us the game outright. Cards like E-Strike, Snatch, or even Blaze Headlong pull a lot of weight as these cards can be played without a long combat chain. Art of War, Spreading Flames, Double Strike, Lava Burst are good cards to park an arsenal and wait for payoff turns. Let's take a sample deck list and let's look at Alex Argaru's our current world champions deck list. Apologize if I'm butchering that name, I'm sure I am. But just a couple of interesting card choices here as a new five player looking at this pile of 80 cards. There's probably like a lot of what is going on here kind of situations. So I just want to clear up a couple of those now. Uh, the first is the Kadachi Emmer's Blade. Uh, yeah, most of the time, Mask of, Momentum, Mask of Momentum and Kadachis go together, and Mask of the Pouncing Links and Searing Emmer's Blade go together. This is because you want to be playing the Mask of the Pouncing Links when your opponent's trying to not let you play the game, right? So Bravo, something like that. If Bravo throws a Spinal Crush at you, you could block with three cards, pitch a blue, and at least throw a Searing, Searing Emmer Blade at the worst, right? Um, Tide Flippers is just there for the AB. You oftentimes aren't wanting to pitch to AB, uh, but if you have the floating resources on your turn, or if it's turn zero, something like that, you might as well have a little bit of AB, kind of protect yourself from it. Uh, this AB1 also fits nicely when you're getting Aether Ice Veined. You know, Aether Ice Vein on hit makes you discard or pay two. So you could pitch a blue, pay one to the Arcane Barrier, one on Tide Flippers, save yourself one life, and then pay two to the on hit of Aether Ice Vein. There's so many, you know, thanks to the Kadachis and the Ravenous Rabbles and the Double Strikes, Bittering Thorns, there's a ton of non-Draconic cards here. So in an effort to get value out of our Phoenix Flame and out of our hero ability, he's uh, going with the full suite of Brand with Cinder Claws, all nine copies here. 
strike great card when you're playing a slower more block oriented game plan and it's also a really good break point to present on a mask momentum trigger uh, being able to throw a seven on that and threaten ending the turn with an arsenal is quite scary stuff ancestral empowerment not only does it block three but it also gives you that constant mind game of you know if you're just throwing a zero for three ronin renegade at your opponent they can't just block it for three freely on chain link three because ancestral empowerment could be lurking in your hand uh, this is going to make your opponent want to block on the second chain link every time uh, which is good for you because if you go six wide all of a sudden uh, you know they have to block like three different times in the chain as opposed to the standard two and if they do start blocking the standard like i'm just going to block the third chain link then they're really going to get punished by the ancestral empowerment that wound is just a blue block three that is sometimes good like if you're able to kadachi and you drew too many blues then you know all of a sudden this is a zero for four at the end of your chain it's not terrible the sink belows and the reinforce the lines these are strictly in the sideboard, so, you know, this is absolutely just against Bravo or Azalea or Usuri, something like that. You want to be siding these in. Uh, most of the time, you are not playing with the defense reactions or the reinforced the line, though. And then Warmonger's Diplomacy is actually one of just the best cards in Flesh and Blood at the moment, in Classic Constructed Flesh and Blood. This kind of just shuts down, like, half the decks in the game, and it's not really costing you anything by playing it. It's just a blue block three at worst. Uh, shuts down, like, half the decks in the game. And a typical play pattern for it is just to block with three cards, then on your turn activate Warmongers. And, you know, certain decks just can't play under that. So you're able to get all of the tempo back. And having the tempo in five is just so huge. Being able to present clean Mask of Momentum breakpoints. We kind of touched on this already. But with a four card hand, it just gives you a lot more agency to do that. The one of a race face, probably for Mechanologist here, uh, just being able to make it so your opponent can't boost, their boom grenades are no longer online. Like so many of their cards say, when a Mechanologist attack does X, a race face shuts all of that down. So if you have a lot of Mechanologists at your locals, it's maybe worth teching in a couple extra copies of that. Command and Conquer is another side deck card here. Uh, most of the time you're not playing it, but you are playing it sometimes, particularly when you're going second against an aggro mirror, something like that. Just giving your opponent one more thing to think about. It's also a phantasm popper, so you're siding in it against Dromai. It's also very good against Azalea, as she's always trying to set up an arsenal against you. It's good just in general when you're on your slower links game plan. It's just such a solid two-card hand, uh, you know, having a blue and command and conquer. Never a bad feeling throwing that out there. Overall, I think this is a very good starting point for Fi. I think this is a very, like cookie cutter like baseline solid deck he's not trying to do anything too cute with the deck list here which i love uh, i i do i would recommend new five players start on this and kind of branch out and tech it out as you see fit uh yeah stellar performance and again a solid deck list that's not trying to get too cute i'm in love with it all right so a little bit of forbidden five tech here uh, I've coined this the Phoenix Flame Dance, and this is what you want to do in those awkward situations where you start going to fatigue or you start suspecting you're about to go to fatigue. You're going to start feeling that before the game is even close to over. And once you start feeling like that, you need to make a mental note not to block with your Mask of Momentum or not to block with your Tiger Stripe Shuko, I'm sorry, and instead block with your Mask of Momentum if you have to. Seriously, just don't block with your Shuko if you think that there's a possibility you're going to go to fatigue. And this is going to be why. So your deck is going to be fooled with garbage blues like these. Uh, so the end of your opponent's turn, you want to activate Fi Effect, pitching a blue, getting back a Phoenix Flame. Uh, then your opponent will end the turn, putting your blue back. You still got the Phoenix Flame. Then on your turn, you'll Phoenix Flame, pitch a blue, swing with Ember Blade, activate Fi again, get back a Phoenix Flame, and then attack with that same Phoenix Flame. Shuko is going to be making it coming in for two unpreventable. So you spent zero cards, you actually spent no cards whatsoever, and you've presented a Searing Ember Blade and a two-attack Phoenix Flame that can't be prevented. So this actually helps you beat a lot of fatigue decks. This is almost like you have another weapon, right? Because you have the three-attack and the two-attack, and you've spent zero cards. All of this is going back to where it came from. You uh, haven't attacked with anything. So this is a great way to combat fatigue, and this is something that every five player, I think, should be comfortable and familiar with. All right, and if you guys are interested in seeing, I could do like genuinely a breakdown of how to play Fi against every CC hero in the game, kind of give you guys a general game plan and outline of how you want to be playing, what you want to be doing, how you want to side deck, things like that. I just think that might be a bit too in the weeds, and I'm not sure everyone would be interested in that. If you are interested in that, go ahead, let me know in the comments down below, and uh, smash that subscribe button just in case I do upload that. You don't want to miss it. 
overall, this was more of just like a how to play it, right? I didn't want it to just be another deck tech or telling you why someone played the cards that they played. I remember when I first got into this game, I wanted to play Lexi and there was plentiful deck techs on Lexi, but no one was telling me how to play Lexi. So I'm trying to, trying to be the change I wanna see in the community. I hope this helps out some five players, particularly some newer five players. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, rate, subscribe, and help the algorithm help me out just a little bit later, gamers.